Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I give glory to God and I'm excited for another opportunity for us to meet like this again. Because every time we meet, we are guaranteed the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in his name. His presence is right there. So his presence is here with us. In 1 John chapter 1, the Bible says that, excuse me, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. That means our fellowship is spiritual. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 4, he said, the Father seeketh for such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Are you see? Can you see that? Then in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, Paul said, we are the fulfillment of, that of the Father's desire to worship him in spirit and in truth. He said, for we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and we put no confidence at all in the flesh. I want to welcome you to an exciting time. And I trust the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I'm meeting you at the right time and at the right place. Or whatever your condition, I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that in Jesus' name, it is well. It is well. That's what the Bible says. They say to the righteous, it is well. How God will do it, don't worry about it. He said, for God, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the righteous. Now, the word righteous there means the one that has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Lord knows how to deliver you from whatever the condition whether it is financial, emotional, mental, family, business, don't worry about it. What the only requirement of the Lord for you is that you should believe. That's what the Bible said. I mean, God is not looking for you to give him goat. He's not looking for sacrifice. He's not looking for uh, incense. He's not looking for you to mutilate yourself, punish your body. No. All he wants you to do is believe. Just believe. He said the same gospel, the same word that was preached unto them was preached unto us. But the word preached to them did not profit them because of one reason. Not because they didn't dance on the floor or they didn't give them mantu or they didn't give them prophecy. He said, but it was not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that the, uh, uh, your faith in Jesus is intact until you are, you will hang in there and then prove Jesus' faithfulness, you know, he's a faithful God and he will not leave you at this time. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, now let's start with that uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. You know, uh, there's something else I want to do in this broadcast, but I just want to, um, I, I want to be able to get you involved. But before I do that, let me show you a scripture. First of all, you know, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 5, the Bible says, let us therefore fear. Now, the word fear here is not, oh, all the Old Testament fear. This word fear is reverence. Let's reverence God. You know, let's be convinced. Let's walk in awe, in honor of our God. You know, we need to have the honor of our God in our heart. Anywhere we go, whatever we do. He said, let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should, uh, should seem to come short of it. Verse 2 now says, he said, for, the, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Now, of course, he, he, you know, in King James, he said, unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. The people is calling them are the Israelites, the Jews. You know, when they came out of uh, Egypt as slaves, you know, they, they got freedom from the Egyptians and the Lord brought them out by the hand of Moses, you know. So when God brought them out in the wilderness, you know, Moses told them what God said to him. He said the land, the promised land, that land that he has promised them is for them. You know, so he selected a few guys, you know, about 12 of them, to go spy out the land. You know, they all came back. But 10 of them came and brought a wrong report and said there are giants in the land. Impossibilities in the land was too heavy. And so because of what they saw, their heart, you know, couldn't contain it. You know, they, they lost faith. You know, but Joshua and Caleb, the Bible said they had another spirit. The word just simply means that no, they, their mind was made up that if God said it, God would bring it to pass. So that's what he's saying. The, pro, the word, the, prof, the, the prophetic promise word that God gave to Moses, that Moses gave them, that the plan is theirs. The Bible said, 
He did, he, you know, uh, uh, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. You see? see, but what was preached to them, see, but the word preached to them did not profit them. So it's not the gospel of Jesus that was preached to them. It was the, the, the quote unquote, the gospel of the land, the promised land. God had promised that, look, no matter what, this land is yours. I've given it to you. As though God did not know there would be giants there. As though anything on that land would take God by surprise. So, because of what they saw, they did not mix the, the word, the promised word, with faith in their heart. Are you seeing that? So, because they did not mix faith with the word, the word did not promise them. I mean, the word did not profit them. The only thing God requires from any born again child of God in this dispensation of the New Testament is your faith. And the faith is not even your own. It was given to you at the point of salvation. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says. 2, 8 and 9. He said, by grace you are saved through faith. He said, it is the gift of God. It's not even yours. Lest any man should boast. So God has given you and I faith. We have faith. Don't let anybody tell you you don't have faith. You have faith. You have faith. I have faith. No, 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 no. Don't let anybody tell you. And Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. Your faith is not little. He was talking to a people who were living under the Old Testament. Old Covenant. As at that time, he had not died for us yet. He had not died yet. It was after he died, resurrected, that he now begins to give faith. To anybody who believes the gospel about Jesus. Are you understanding how it works? I'm going to explain this again. Jesus gives faith to be born again to anybody who hears the gospel. Who hears about Jesus. Who hears that Jesus has died for us. He was raised from the dead for us. As you are hearing this, as you are hearing it, at the point of you being convinced that truly what you are hearing about Jesus is true. He gives you faith. Wow. He gives you faith for you to actually believe him to be born again. What a great God. So, it's not that you don't have faith. You have faith. Faith is yours. You have faith. I'm telling you. So, you shouldn't sit down where they say, your faith is small. That's why you are not healed. Your faith is small. That's why the, 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 the doors are not open. That's why uh, uh, this is not happening for you. That's a lie. Those are lies. Those are manipulation. That's not the truth of the gospel. The gospel is very clear. Faith, put Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Look at it. It says, for by grace you are saved. Through faith. You are saved by grace. Through faith. He said, and that, that faith is not of yourself. Don't you get it? You are not the one that generated that faith. You didn't generate it. So if you didn't generate it, how did you get it? It is the gift of God. God gave it to you free of charge. At the point of salvation. And the faith God gave to you. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, He said it is the same spirit of faith. The same kind of faith. The God kind of faith is what God gave to us. You know the faith God had when He spoke in Genesis. Let there be light. And there was light. That same faith God gave to us. Wow. There's nothing we cannot change. Except we are not made up our mind to change it. There's no circumstance or condition that we cannot change. I'm telling you. That's what the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. 1 John 5 1. Glory be to God. You know, there's something I'm about to, to say to you tonight. Or whatever the time is. Your time zone. Wherever you're watching. But I just needed to exhort you with this first. You know, he said, whosoever believeth. That Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. Just by believing in that, ah, true, true, Jesus is the Son of God. He is Christ. He is the one that came to die for my sin. He is the one that actually died for my sin. He is the one that God raised from the dead. And you confess it with your mouth. The Bible said you are born of God. Verse 2. Watch that. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, by, by this we know. Uh, that we love the children of God. No, no, not verse 2, sorry. Verse 4. <laughs> A lot of scriptures are joining, jumping through my head. You know, verse 4, quickly. He said, for whoso, whatsoever is born of God. Remember, anyone who believes in Jesus is born of God. That's the only qualification. To believe in Jesus, you become God's property. God's child. God's, a member of God's family. 
you know. He said, anyone who be, who, uh, whosoever is born of God, overcometh the war. And this is the victory that overcometh the war. Even our faith. So that faith God gave us. He gave us to become born again. Now that we are born again, we are above all the challenges in this world. By faith. Are you seeing it? So it is when you set your faith aside, you come down to the level of the challenges in this world and you begin to feel the pains of the challenges in this world. Every time you decide to stand by faith, no matter what the challenge is, no matter what it is, instead of it to afflict you, it will lift you. Remember, it was the same river, uh, water that flooded the earth and destroyed the earth that lifted Noah's ark. Glory be to God. So are you seeing him? So don't joke with your faith. Don't play down your faith. Don't let anybody play down your faith. Don't let any man of God, no matter how anointed or the size of his church, don't let him tell you that you, one, you don't have faith. Two, that your faith is small. No, your faith is not, you have faith and your faith is not small. You know, I don't know if you can get that Second Corinthians, and I think it's in chapter 5, you know. The Bible said, we having the same spirit of faith. It's the same spirit. Even in Mark, that's what it said. We have the God kind of faith. Is the God class of faith. Are you getting it? So don't let anybody tell you you don't have faith if you are born again, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. So, but if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, you should know that you don't have faith. Because you have to believe in the gospel. When you are convinced about the gospel, as I'm speaking now, Jesus will give you faith to accept him as Lord and Savior. And that faith is what you will live by. Look at it. He said, we... Those of us who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We, having the same, not another kind, not a lower kind, not a different kind, the same spirit of faith. Are you seeing it? We have the same spirit of faith. Oh, glory be to God. The same spirit of faith. The same faith Jesus had and he used to believe in the father when he gave up the ghost on the cross that the father will raise him from the dead that was the same faith god shared with you with us with jesus christ i don't know whether you understand what i'm saying hey this is the highest level the highest kind of faith look the man that is pastoring hundred thousand congregation does not have a bigger faith than you, that your church is just 10 people. No, he doesn't have a bigger faith. I'm telling you, look, even right now, the thing that scares him does not scare you. I'm okay, if he, if he has more faith than you, let him walk on the street without mobile police, security men, policemen guiding him, protecting him. The way you and I will walk on the street. He can't. You see, his faith it's not different from yours. Don't look at the size of a man's church to determine his level of faith. That's a big lie. Everyone in Christ Jesus is given the same level of faith. But the challenge is this. Most of us do not release ourselves to walk in that faith by exercising ourselves in it in order to build ourselves. Are you getting it? So, when you begin to understand, I'm not teaching on that to, uh, uh, in this episode. Maybe in another episode I will, I will do. But I just wanted to get you to see that. That the man that has, uh, uh, is like uh, Dangote, he's the richest man in Africa. So, does that mean that Dangote has a greater faith than Pastor Deboe, than Bishop Michael Konkwo, or than myself? He doesn't have faith. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even have faith. Yet, he's the richest man in Africa. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You see, so when we come into Christ and faith is given to us, it, what you have do, and I don't have does not show that your faith is higher as a gift from God to you than my own. That's a lie of the devil. It's the same kind of faith. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible said in verse number, I mean Romans chapter 12, verse number 3. Watch this. Romans 12, 3. Watch this. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has given 
to every man. He didn't give to some and left some. He gave to every man. What did he give? D, measure of faith. He didn't give us A, measure of faith. He gave us the measure. God has a measure. And the measure is the measure of God's faith. That is the measure he shared with us. The measure of his faith that Jesus had, that the Father honored in raising Jesus from the dead, that is the same measure of faith God has given to you and I. Or punish ignorance. Uh, go, go. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look, don't let any man, any man born of a woman rubbish you that you don't have faith or that your faith is small. If he thinks that you don't have faith, let him come and walk on the street of Lagos together with you and I, without policeman. I have faith to walk on the street without any security man guiding, guiding me or protecting me. With nobody carrying gun. No siren in front of me, no siren behind. I have faith. As a matter of fact, Elijah in the Old Testament that they used to quote didn't have security guards. The soldiers that came, the 50 soldiers that came, they were blinded. The, the other 50, they were blinded. He, let, he showed that, uh, look, the dimension with which Elijah operated, he didn't need mobile police. He didn't need Nigerian DSS. No. So you see, whatever a man has, does not show that his faith is superior to yours. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's just that you, you have not been exercising yourself in your faith. Simple. The day you start exercising yourself in your own gifted faith, you will start getting results. The result is available to you. Nobody is superior to you. Nobody. Not in the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible said the eye cannot say to the leg, I do not need you. Don't you understand? He's saying that there is no superiority. There is no superiority in, 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 in the gospel. No superiority. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. I want to stop right there because that's not really what I came to share with you. But I, I just felt in my heart that I needed to encourage your faith before I tell you what I came to do right now. Now, what I came to do right now is to ask you. I'm asking you. I'm, go you know, I'm going to be very direct. And I trust the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to touch your heart and to open your heart you know, into this. Uh, 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 right now, um, I have a need. It's not a personal need. It's a ministry need. You know? And I need you. you know? I need all my friends all over the world, all my sons all over the world, all my daughters, my spiritual daughters, sons, my friends, my colleagues, even my enemies, you know, I need everybody to come alongside me, you know, right now because I, we have a need and the need is very simple. It is, uh, we have a need of uh, instruments like keyboard, amplifier, um, and the rest, you know, I don't want to go over them, you know, speakers, you know, all, all, all those things, you know. You know, so specifically, you know, we're, we're trying to get new instrument. You know, I know that there will be one or two persons who, who never are happy to hear, you know, about other people's needs so as to support it. You know, um, I know somebody may say, eh, AVJ, if God send you, why, why are you asking people to help you to buy keyboard or to buy amplifier or to buy any instrument? Why? If God send you, God will do it himself. You know, don't follow such people. They are, you know, um, it's unfortunate. They are, you know, they are, I'm trying to put it mildly. Uh, they are ignorant of the truth. You know, they, do, they have no clue. They have no idea of what they are talking about. Do you know the same Jesus that told Peter to cast his net? into the deep, into the sea. That same Jesus could have asked the fish to all jump out of the water into the boat. But he didn't do that. He said, Peter, cast the net. Cast the net. Sometimes he does that to humble Peter, to humble him. He could have asked Peter, Peter, step aside in the boat. All the fishes in the sea, I'm going to ask them to jump into the boat. And all the fish would have asked, answered him. All the fish, they would have answered Jesus Christ. Sometimes, he allows us opportunity in, in, you know, to come your way, to ask you to give, to come alongside us, to support us in the things that we are doing. You know, 
Why he does that is, is left to his own discretion. Sometimes just to give, you know, to give you opportunity to do good. It's just to give you opportunity to, good, to, do, to do good. I mean, they were selling lands and houses in Acts of the Apostles and bringing. The Lord Jesus could have, you know, mandated unbelievers to go and bring their resources so that these people don't have to sell their houses and lands to bring to church. You know, so don't let anybody with a myopic mind, small thinking, you know, uh, confuse you. Even Jesus, Jesus, you know, I heard one man of God one time, he said, if God sends you, if God is the one that sends you, you will not ask anybody for support. God does not need support, you know. As I was hearing the man of God, I felt sorry for him. You know, I felt sorry. The reason I felt sorry for him is, uh, is his ignorant, scriptural ignorant, test, New Testament ignorant of God's working. I don't want to use the word God, of, G, of the Lord Jesus' working. You know, he's very ignorant of it. And then some people who have been watched, watched at, at that now take that, you know, and start running. Look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 30. See what Jesus said. Look at what Jesus said. Luke chapter 6, verse 30. Daddy, quickly, please. Luke 6, 30. He said, give to everyone that asks of thee. That's what he said. So how do you give except the man ask? He said, everybody who asks you, if you have it, share with the person. That's what I'm asking. I'm asking. That's what Jesus said. Give to everyone. He's talking to you and I. Give to everyone that asks of thee. Everyone that has a need and ask you, give to them. Share it with them. And this one, I'm not asking you because I need money for us to eat food. No. I'm asking you because I need this instrument for ministry. You don't even have to give me the money. All you can do is even buy it. You can buy us keyboard. Buy us amplifier. Buy us uh, uh, mixer. Buy us speakers. Buy us microphone. Whatever. Just buy and, and then reach us to come and pick it up. I'll be so glad. You know, so, but to take the burden of the stress of all that away from you, that's why we are asking you, you know, to be a part of the, you know. So, somebody say, uh, Jesus, Jesus did not ask anybody for anything. Jesus did not need anybody to do anything for him, you know. Jesus just, don't follow all those uh, teachings. I'm not here to argue about that, please. And please, nobody should come on my page to write all those nonsense. If you do, um... I will not be too pleased with you. So please don't come on my page to do that. If what I'm doing now is offensive to you, just pass over. You know, the Lord bless you and I still love you anyhow. Just pass over so that you don't contaminate and then become a, 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 a discouragement to those that the Lord Jesus has put in my heart that is going, going to reach them to help us. All right. So let me share, let me share this with you. In uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 3. GNT translation. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. For you to know that this is not new. I mean, Jesus himself needed people to support him. People to help out with their resources. Look at it. This is Jesus, almighty God, in the body, which is disciples. Look at what the Bible says. He said, Joanna, whose husband, Chuba, was an officer in Herod's court, and Susanna, and many other women who used their own resources to help, the word help means to support, to support Jesus and his disciples. So don't follow a man who, who after God has helped him, you know, you know, begin, you know, that's the thing with black man. When a black man is helped, you know, and he climbs and gets to the top of the ladder, he will just remove the ladder, in, in, you know, entirely. Because if he, he wants everybody <laughs> to pay obeisance to him and to worship him, you know, um, there's a man of God in this, in, in this country, in my country, in Nigeria, you know, uh, kept pff, always telling people, I've never begged anybody for anything. We've never asked. Nothing comes from abroad. It comes, everything comes from ab above, you know, you know. Now, I remember when, you know, somebody gave him $1 million, you know, because they needed money, things in the ministry to do, you know. Uh, what's the name of this uh, great man of God? T.L. Osborne. Tell us, Bond gave you one million dollars. As at that time, in the eighties, you know, if I have somebody to give me one million dollars, don't you think I will not? I, I will, I will, <laughs> I will even say, I will, I will say a lot of things myself. You know, I will say thank you, Jesus. I will. I mean, 
I wouldn't need to come and start asking anybody to. So it's a black man thing. It's not a scriptural thing. That somebody come and tell you, God does not need support. You cannot support God. That's a lie. That is a fat lie. As a matter of fact, Satan, demons are talking through the man. You know, because God makes such things, makes such rooms to help us to have opportunity to do good. Look at it. That's what it said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Look at it. Galatians 6, 10. Look at what the Bible says. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Look at Quickly put it. He said, so then, he said, as we have therefore opportunity. Are you seeing it? So God creates these things for us to have opportunity. What's the opportunity for? He said, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to how many men? All men. He said, but especially to them who are of the household of faith. Especially those who are born again Christians. Especially the things of God in the house of God. That's where, that's where you know, you should do good more. That's what the Bible said. He said, as we have therefore opportunity. So God creates these opportunities. He, he allowed these things to take place for believers to have opportunity to do good. So I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ to ask you. Another opportunity has come. Join me. Help me to get this instrument. Just help me to do it. Even Paul. Paul had people like that. You know. Paul, Paul could never have survived without these same helpers in ministry. In, Acts, in Romans 16, verse 3 and, and 4. Romans 16, verse 3 and 4. Let me show you. Paul himself had people like that. You know. Paul had people who helped him. Look at it. He said, for those... No, no, 16, verse, chapter 16, verse 3. Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Look at it. He's there. I'm, I'm trying to read the scripture. He said, Greek Priscilla and Aquilia. That's husband and wife. My helpers in Christ Jesus. This, this husband and wife were well to do. Morally, financially, and physically, they were there for Paul. They were always there. They were supporters. They were supporting Paul regularly. Paul said, help me greet them. This is my helpers. This is my supporters. Another one for helper there is supporter. He said, help me greet this is my supporters. I trust the Lord Jesus to help, to use you to support me in getting this instrument. I'm going to ask you. I'm not going to, it's not a task. You know, I'm, we're not tasking anybody that you should give X, Y, Z a man and that if you don't give, God is not going to bless you. No, not at all. Whether you give or not, you are blessed. You are blessed. You know, there's, not, there's no devil that can stop that. No devil can stop it. But I'm asking you. The Bible says for everyone that asks, give to him. I am asking you not to give to me, but to give for the work of the ministry. You know, even those women in Jesus' time, they were there regularly. That's why uh, 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 Judas had to carry the purse. Because they were bringing their resources. They were helping Jesus. They were supporting Jesus' ministry and his, uh, and his disciples. That's why none of them had job. They were not going to work. Jesus didn't have employment somewhere. It was what these women were bringing that they were feeding on. You know? So please, I'm asking you, I need you to help me. I need money. I need your resources. I need you to come alongside me to get this instrument. Like I said, it's not the money that is my target. It's the instrument. And I need it within the next two weeks. By the, before uh, uh, this, uh, the 7th of December, if I can get it before the 7th of December, I will be so grateful. Please don't procrastinate. You know, if you can give me 50,000, that will be fine. If you can give me 100,000 naira, it will be fine. If you can give me 20, 20,000 naira, or 10,000, 5,000, you know. I, I, I'm not used to asking people for money. You see, but when it comes to the things of the ministry, I do ask. I do ask. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to ask. I don't ask people for money for myself. There's no man alive or dead anywhere that I've ever gone to to go and ask for money for myself. No man. But I do ask for money for the things of God. You know? And I do tell people, you don't necessarily have to give me the cash because it's not the cash that I'm after. If you can help us to buy a good keyboard, please get it and send to us. You know? If you can help us to get a good amplifier, you know, a mixer, speakers, microphones, you know, please do. I need it within the next two weeks from now. So I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, help me to get these things, please.
you know, and I trust the Lord Jesus that he will minister the same grace to you in Jesus' name. All right. I'm going to put, I'm going to ask them to put our account number. So if you want to, you know, if you don't want to go through the stress of going to buy, you know, you can send us money. You know, within the next two weeks, I'm asking, I need at least 50 people to come alongside right now. 50 people, you know, 50, 50 people. Be part of those 50 people. Join in. Do it right now. You know, do it right now. In the next two weeks, don't procrastinate. You know, join in. Join in. You can use Zenit Bank. Just send it to Zenit Bank. That's our ministry account now. Zenit Bank. 1001-488-167. 1001-488-167. I need you to be a part of it. You know, let the Lord use you. Let the Lord touch your heart and use you to minister this same grace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Actually, that's the reason for today's broadcast. You know, that was, uh, because this is um, something very uh, serious on my in my heart. You know, so and who else would I go to ask to help us out? Except apart from you, you that the Lord Jesus has brought us together. You know, as a family through this medium. So I trust God in Jesus' name, and the Lord will use you again. To make this work in the name of Jesus. You know, so if you want to send me a message for me to know, or, or you want to find out how to give more, or whether you want to get the instrument, any of it, and then you want to uh, let me know so that we can come and pick it up, you can use my WhatsApp, WhatsApp number, you know, to send me a WhatsApp. That way we can communicate back and forth. You know, my WhatsApp number is plus two three four. 8030718006. I'm going to say it again. Plus 234 You know, I trust the Lord Jesus Christ because my heart is, I'm persuaded in my heart that the Lord Jesus has given us these 50 people already to help us. So I'm asking you to be part of these 50 people in the name of Jesus, you know. Um, if whatever means you want to use to support us, please do, you know. And I'm sincerely asking, and I trust God that you have done that, and the Lord will touch your heart to do it. Please don't be under pressure. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Don't be under pressure. But it's an opportunity for you and I to do good. An opportunity for you and I to support the things of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for hearing. Thank you for being available and being a part of it in Jesus' name. Please let me hear from you. I need these things within the next two weeks. Between now and the 7th of uh, December 2020, please, you know, I, I, I ask you in Jesus' name. All right, this is ABJ, Apostle Victor James, you know. I'll let you know as the, as the thing is coming up and then how God is helping, you know, and whoever is helping us in Jesus' name. So if you are abroad, whether you are, you are in America, you are in Great Britain, uh, you are in Europe, uh, South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, you know, China, Australia, because I have, you know, followers from all these countries and uh, Dubai and Qatar, you know. So send me WhatsApp and let me know, please. If there's any other question you want, maybe you want to use Western Union, you want to send us through Western Union, please use that WhatsApp number, you know, to reach me so that we can arrange that. That way, your, your gift does not fall into the hand of frosters, please. You know, thank you for doing it. This is AVJ, Apostle Victor J. Anybody that sends you any number or anything and asking for money in my name, please don't answer. The only time I do that is through video, where you will see me and hear my lips moving about it, just like I have done this one. Thank you for giving, and God bless you in the name of Jesus. This is AVJ, Apostle Victor James, and I am signing out. Oh, punish the devil. Bye-bye. <laughs>